is titled Inverse Trigonometry. We're going to be looking at pages 17 and 18. If you have a highlighter, pull out your highlighter. If you have your own calculator, great. Uh, if you don't have your own calculator, you're going to be using the Desmos Scientific Calculator. Okay, so for question 78, it says, Mr. Gao needs to build a wheelchair access ramp for the school's auditorium. The ramp must rise a total of three feet to get from the ground to the entrance of the building. In order to follow the state building code, the angle formed by the ramp and the ground cannot exceed 4.76 degrees. Okay? Mr. Gao has plans from the planning department that call for the ramp to start 25 feet away from the building. Will the ramp meet the building code? Draw an appropriate diagram, add all the measures you can, or the measurements, and what does Mr. Gao need to know? Okay, so the ramp needs to be gained three feet to, from the rest of the area up to the doorways, right? They're going to start it at 25 feet away for the ramp. That angle in there, we're just going to put that little theta symbol, and we want to know, is that theta 4.7 degrees, 4.76 degrees, or it could be less. You just can't have greater than 4.76, or it won't meet the wheelchair code, okay? What happens if a ramp's too steep? What happens to a wheelchair? It flips over, goes flying, okay? So you can't have a too steep of a ramp or that wheelchair is going to have problems getting up and down. Especially going down, you might uh, have some problems here. Okay, so we're going to talk about part B. If you have a highlighter, go ahead and... Uh, Get it, get it going on highlighting some stuff. It says, to determine an angle measure from a trigonometric ratio, you need to undo it. Just like you can undo addition and subtraction, multiplication with division, or squaring by taking the square root. These examples are all pairs of inverse operations. Okay? When you use the calculator to do this, you use inverse trigonometric functions that are usually labeled inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. They are pronounced inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. On, in, on many calculators, you must press the inverse or the second key first, then the sine, cosine, or tangent. Just depends on what brand of calculator you have, okay? So if you can't find it on your calculator, I can come help you find it. But most of you are going to be doing it on the Desmos Scientific Calculator, okay? So the first thing it wants us to do is to verify that your calculator can compute an inverse trigonometric value by using the triangle, right? from lesson 422, and we want to compute, compute the inverse cosine of 8 over 16. We want to make sure we get an angle of 60 degrees, okay? So on a calculator, here's what it looks like. Here's the cosine button, and you're going to notice that above the cosine button, in light green, it shows inverse cosine. So on this particular calculator, you have to hit the green second button first, then the cosine, and notice that it displays inverse cosine, not just regular cosine. If for some reason it doesn't show it, hit clear and try it again, okay? Then you're going to type in the fraction, which was 8 over 16, so 8 divided by 16, hit the equal sign, and it gives you an angle measure of 60 degrees. So we say, yes, the calculator works 
When you type in inverse cosine of 8 over 16, you get 60 degrees. Awesome. Okay? All right. Part C says, return to your diagram from part A. According to the plan, what angle will the ramp make with the ground? Will the ramp be to code? Okay? So if we look back up at part A for Mr. Gao, he needed to have 3 feet here and 25 feet here. So from that angle, that's opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use the tangent, but we have to use inverse tangent because we want the angle. And we're going to say the opposite, which was 3, over the adjacent, which was 25. Then we type it in the calculator. So on this calculator, you do second tangent, which gives you the inverse tangent of 3 over 25. So 3 divided by 25. Hit the equal sign. <coughs> And we have 6.84 with a 2 next to it. Oh, that should have stayed a 4. That should be a 4 right there, not a 5. 6.84, either way, whether you have 6.84 or 6.85, that's going to be too big. 6.85 degrees is way more than 4.76. Remember, it had to be 4.76 or less. Well, he got... 6.85. That wheelchair is going to go flying, and we don't want that, right? We want the wheelchair to go nice and smooth, okay? So for part D, it says, at least how far from the building must the ramp start in order to meet the building code? If Mr. Gao builds the ramp exactly to code, how long will the ramp be, okay? So the, the largest that angle can be is 4.76. So I filled in the angle measure of 4.76. It has to be 3 feet from the ground up to the doorway. We need to change that 25 to some number, but we don't know what that number is yet. So that's where we're going to put our variable. Okay, That's how far away that ramp needs to start. <coughs> okay, So from that angle, we have opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use tangent again. So we're going to say the tangent of 4.76 equal to the opposite, which is 3, over the adjacent, which is x. And that sets up our proportion by putting a 1 in the denominator right here. Okay? Now we can do our cross product. So we're going to multiply the x times the tangent of 4.76. Set that equal to 1 times 3. To get the x by itself, we divide both sides by the tangent of 4.76 so that they'll cancel on the left. And then on the right, we're going to divide. So 1 times 3 is 3, and then 3 divided by the tangent of 4.76. So let's type that in the calculator. Let me clear that one out. Okay. 3 divided by the tangent of 4.76, let's see, 3.02, okay, so if we're going to round this, we have 36.02, but next to that 2 is a 7, so we're going to round up to a 3, so instead of having 25 feet, it has to start 36 away that ramp okay then the wheelchair can go up smoothly and go down smoothly without going blind okay any questions on part D there anybody still writing okay which part do you want All right, flip over to the top of page 18. Top of eight, page 18 is question 79. It says, for the triangle at right, determine the measures of angle, a, of 
angle A and angle B. Once you have solved for the measure of the first acute angle, and you can pick A or B, what knowledge about the angles in triangles could help you to solve for the second acute angle measure? So I picked to do angle A first. So A is over here. I called it theta, but you can put any variable there you want. So from there, I know the 14 and the 15, which is adjacent and hypotenuse. So the trig function that uses adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So I did the cosine of 14 over 15, but I want to solve for the angle, so I did the inverse cosine. So on this calculator, you go second cosine. Make sure it has the little inverse negative 1 up there. And then type in the ratio of 14 to 15. Hit the equal sign. Thank you. And then we have 21.03, but there's a 9 next to the 3, so we round up to 21.04. Now, to solve for angle B, we could do the same thing, except for we would have opposite and hypotenuse. So you could use another trick function to solve. Or, because it's a triangle, and you know this angle is already 90, you could su simply subtract the 21.04 that you just found out from the 90, and that would tell you that angle B is 68.96. Okay? You know two of the three angles in a triangle, you can subtract them from 180, or in this case, because you already know that was 90, you can subtract it from 90. Okay? All right. Question 80. <coughs> Examine the triangles below. Note that the diagrams are not drawn to scale with your team. You're going to look through all the triangles first and see if any look familiar. If possible, determine the angle measure or the side length using a trigonometric tool. Then for all other triangles, identify which tool you used. Okay, write and solve the equ equation to determine the missing side length. I'm going to do A with you, and then in your groups of four, you're going to do B and C. So let's look at A first. So for A, I went ahead and highlighted the angle theta, and that's what we want to solve for. From that angle, we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So I knew to use cosine, but we're solving for the angle, so we're going to use inverse cosine. The adjacent side is 12, so I put that in the numerator. The hypotenuse is 24, so I put that in the denominator. And then I typed it in the calculator. So for the calculator, you go inverse cosine, so second cosine, make sure it has a little one, and then type in the ratio of 12 to 24. Hit the equals, and it's going to give you an angle measure of 60 degrees. Okay? Write this part down at the bottom. If you're solving for a side, you're going to use regular trig. So you're either going to use the sine, cosine, or tangent button. But if you're solving for an angle, you're going to use inverse trig. So you're going to write down inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. Okay? For parts B and C that you're going to do in your groups of four, one of them you're solving for an angle, so you're going to use inverse trig. And one of them you're solving for a side, so you're going to use regular trig. Okay? Go ahead and turn into your...